couple weeks ago, I was in another state, and I, you know, I had not been in my room for about a week and a half, which doesn't seem long, right? And then I realized, could I draw my room right now from memory? I am in there all the time, I do my school in there, I do my work in there, could I draw every single detail of my room right now? And you would assume that it'd be a very easy task. Okay, you could probably even do it. But if you're someone like me who's a subtle maximalist, you've got a lot of knickknacks and you've got a lot of little tiny things that you looked at once in a store, you bought it, you put it up on a shelf, and you haven't dusted that shelf since you bought it. And that was the predicament that I was in. Now, in order to do this, I would need to use some sort of perspective tactic to kind of make sure that we can see the room in its entirety. So I used a two-point perspective. Had it had been a long time since I'd used two-point perspective, I'm, I'm gonna be so honest right now, I don't use perspective. I raw dog it when I draw. I don't know. The last time I used two-point perspective or any point perspective te technique was like in my first semester of college and so I suddenly remember like oh this is what this is what actual artists use they use you know graphs they use lines something to follow um but I didn't know if I was doing it right I was kind of like I like I don't know if there's a specific like inch measurement to centimeter of like how far apart the lines are supposed to be from one another but I just took a google image kind of scaled it to what my canvas would be and I started off now I started off with the bed because that's an easy one I, I that's where I am most of my time I've got a yellow blanket a yellow comforter and on top that a green leaf blanket now I kind of cheated and I did not draw all my friends here are all my friends they're on my bed every night and they are arranged differently depending on the situation depending on my mood but they're all here all the time. This is my found family trope, okay? And I love them so much, but I couldn't do it. I decided to just stick with my main guy who I'm always holding when I fall asleep, and that's Jerry the Frog. He's really comfortable, and I love him so much. He's... Look. And then, and then, sometimes he'll flip over and he'll hold me like this, and then... It's, like, really romantic. Anyway, oh. Honestly, 21 is not that old to be bringing a Build-A-Bear on the plane. It's not a crazy idea. I'm not different or new for this for this uh, concept, okay? And of course, because he's bright green, you know, he sticks out of the crowd. He, he's very uh, unique. There was a time I was waiting in TSA and I was holding my frog. Someone came up to me in the line and they recognized me, but... <laughs> you know, listen, I don't think I show Jerry a lot. I don't think he's like a, a main character. He's not like a part of like the core cast of the, you know, Asia Ray cinematic universe. But someone came up to me and they were like, I thought it was you. I thought you were Asia, but I wanted to really make sure. And when I saw your frog, I knew that you were Asia. Like they saw my frog, they saw Jerry and they said, that's Asia. It's more of so the fact that it's not like, like I said, like Jerry is a common character, but more of like, that's something Asia would do in an airport, bring a Build-A-Bear, because she's one of, you know, she's a teenage girl. Anyway, so I've drawn the bed, and it's a little bit difficult. The blankets are kind of, I don't know, something's wrong. I don't know how to draw fluffy blankets. I tried, like, looking at, like, Steven Universe references, because his comforter, oh my god, it looks so comfy and it looks so just like filled to the brim like that duvet has actual teddy bear stuffing in it then i decided let's let's start with my desk okay let's start with my desk because there's not a lot of knickknacks on there but there are quite a few things let's start easy i'm having a little bit of an issue remembering how two-point perspective works from what i know and from what i'm thinking is you basically if you want to draw some sort of like object when it comes to a cabinet or a bed or a desk or uh, you know a dresser something that's kind of boxy you start from one of the points and then you draw to the angles as what you desire so it's kind of consistent and it pulls from that perspective so you know you could put the graph up onto the drawing you'd be like this is correct so i did that um but the floor for some reason like the leg, I don't know if you can see it. I can, but it's just, it's from like, it, it doesn't look right. So automatically I'm like, shit, I'm fucked. <laughs> uh, I really wanted it to be like a cool, like I wanted it to be like, yeah, I go to college for art. 
bitch. <laughs> Anyway, so I draw what I know. I know I have a laptop, and I know that I have a stand to elevate the laptop. If you don't got one of these, if you don't have one of these, you should really invest in it. It adds a little oomph. And no, you should not buy products that add oomph. Um, but this was, I got this for free from my aunt, so I know I have a mouse. I know I have a coaster, and there is always a mug with some sort of liquid in it. I know that I have one of those like LED lamps that I see a lot of like animes that surround more of like the story around kids like in, in high school have like at their desk when they study. Th like that's what inspired me to get this lamp. Okay, next I know I have a tablet that I, I know I have a tablet and it's in the corner. I know I have a poster of like a stitched embroidered moment from Sesame Street on my wall. But I don't remember exactly what it looks like. Like, I don't remember the stitching pattern. I don't remember the colors. I know Big Bird is in there somewhere. Then I have my shelves. I have these shelves. Here's one. Here, here's one right here. Now this is where all my fun trinkets are on. This is the difficult part. And it wasn't even like the trinkets that were the difficult part, but once again, the two point perspective shit of figuring out, well, essentially how thick this is, how wide this is gonna be. The two-point perspective isn't just like you're standing in the corner of the room, but you're a little bit lower, so you kind of have to see the underneath. I've got a lumbar supportive work chair and a footrest, so my knees are equal to my hips and I don't get lower back pain. Strap me into a wheelchair. Take me somewhere. Far away. Anyway, I have a card here which I'm resting you on right now, and this is- this is truly where a lot of, like, miscellaneous junk, shit, crap, fucking anything you can imagine is here. Like, I'm looking at it right now, and if I close my eyes, I could not see it in my head. And at this point, I only could think of, like, four things. Books that I have, which you are currently, you know, standing on. A plant, a lamp, and a cup with a bunch of, like, soap carving tools. When's the last time I carved soap? Three years ago. Now we move on to my book shelf, my book cabinet, if you will. And then we'll, we also move on to three separate shelves with rope supporting them that hovers on top. Now I had a fucking time with this. Once again, the curse of the two-point perspective. You'd think it would be an aid, but if anything, it is a hindrance. The shelves are way thinner. I, I had a really fucking hard time with parallel lines. Let's just say that the window next to it is not e like, the proportions are so wrong. I could never be a painter. I can never be a background artist. I don't know how people, I will see people on Twitter and they're like, hi, like the, it's like portfolio day. Hi. My name is Adeline, and I love doing BG paint backgrounds. You fucking liar. You- you son of a bitch. What are you talking about? What is so enjoyable about this pro- is it the symmetry that you like? Um... Well, this is where I come to start to disappoint you. So I start to do the line art, but unfortunately, the, um, the size of the canvas was making the brush that I had chosen to do the line art in very pixelated. So I'd alternate between three different brushes to find the one that was right for me. I then did the shelf and then I realized that, okay, we should probably figure out how Big Bird fits into this whole poster on the right side of the wall. I didn't get very far. I did Big Bird. One tree and one line that represents where the building stops. So that was kind of what started me off into realizing, not realizing it, but more of like subconsciously, I was like, if I skip this detail, if I skip one of the easiest things, because like I see that fucking poster every day of my life, it is my favorite thing in the world. If I can't figure out that right now, how am I going to figure out the little fun figurines and all my little guys that are on my shelves that I had not looked twice at? in the past year that I have seen and put them up there. Someone's gonna take my drawing, stitch this, put it on TikTok and be like, this is where you fucked up. This is where, you know who it's gonna be? A 17 year old CalArts student. The bed was not as uh, voluptuous as I wanted it to be. And I had kind of trouble figuring out how the leaf fell onto the bed. At this point, I was like, I need a reference photo. I can't keep 
you know, using my imagination and assuming what it looks like on the bed. So I pulled up a reference photo. I, st I still, it still didn't help me. You want to know what the proudest, like, I am of what section I'm, you want to know what the proudest thing I am? Do you want to know what the proudest thing I am? Do you want to know what the... It's getting to a point where I can't speak my first language and my only language. Do you want to know what the proudest thing I- Oh my- How do I, The proudest thing I am of- <laughs> Do you want to know what I am most proud of in this drawing? There we go. It's the fucking books. And they're all the way in the corner. And unless you zoom in to appreciate the detail and the fine lines of what I would assume are the book markings, you would never know. Yeah, so I, I'm actually really satisfied with those books. That's that second shelf up there is really it's really nice. There's like my desk still looks weird. Something's off. Also, that photo frame, that's not what it looks like. <laughs> Who would have a photo frame of clouds next to them? Here's the thing. When it comes to like background artists and like how they kind of draw smaller details, it's not like extremely tiny details, but more of the outline of the detail. Like when I would watch Star vs. the Forces of Evil and I'd see like a, sh a book of shelves. They didn't draw every single book individually, but they painted one streak and just like did a bunch of lines. It's more of like the concept of the fact that, oh, if you first glance, it looks like a, a book of, sh you know, a book of shelves. Oh, wow. A book of shelves. And I said it earlier and I didn't catch myself. A shelf of books. <laughs> I wish that little wine down there wasn't empty. I could really drink away my problems, but I guess this will have to do. My shelf of books. Fuck. <laughs> but then, but then there's Steven Universe and they draw every single book individually. The rug. All right, now I need you to like realize this is what the rug looks like, okay? I don't remember. This is a new rug. It's not a new rug, it's an old rug, but I recently become into my possession. So I was like, you know, uh, I'm gonna have to give myself just like a, a little pass. Um, and that is the conclusion <laughs> of the video. It's true. It. This is all I got, and I don't want to finish it. I'm not, I will do a lot of things for you. But when it comes to my art, I will not finish. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. I'm sorry if you're sad and you're like, wait, but I wanted to see it colored in. Screenshot it, import it into PixArt, and do it yourself. Because it's not coming out of my ass. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to bed. Good night. <laughs>